All right, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining today's webinar sponsored by Zyflow. Today, we're gonna to be talking about creative collaboration in 2021, why the expectations are so high and how to meet them. Just gonna talk about a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. So today's session is being recorded uh, and we will circulate a link to the recording um, after we're done today. All attendee lines are muted, and that's just mostly to cut down on background noise um, on the attendee side, um, leaf blowers, um, screaming children, what, what have you. Um, so feel, please feel free to use the Q&A interface uh, in the Zoom webinar um, uh, during the course of the call, and we'll either take the questions at the end, ideally, or if we see them in, during the course of the call and we're able to take them, uh, we may take them during the course of the call as well. Um, and as I said, every, um, um, you will receive a copy of the recording as well as the presentation um, at the end of today's call. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, meet our presenters today. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Katie Oberthaler, our brand manager here at Zyflow. Katie, take it away. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Mike said, I'm Katie, our, our brand manager here at Zyflow. Um, and we'll be joined today by Will, our VP of operations. And uh, we're gonna talk through some uh, remote working best practices specifically for creative teams. Um, and Will will be showing um, some high value integrations that you can use uh, between online proofing, Slack, Jira, um, some of the typical day-to-day systems you're using to facilitate your creative work processes. Um, so if you joined our if you joined our webinar last month, uh, you know we did a huge uh, survey to marketing, brand, design leaders, agency leaders, really wanted to understand um, not just how they're facilitating remote work, but what does the creative production landscape look like in 2020, which was a volatile year for almost everyone on earth. Um, and as part of that survey, we asked, you know, how has COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 crisis impacted uh, the way that you're facilitating creative review and approval. And one thing that was interesting to learn is that workloads have actually increased for marketing and product teams um, with so much, uh, like I said, volatility sort of in global events. Um, product focus areas are continuing to have to adjust, communication plans are adjusting on the fly, and that's just creating a ton of work for um, marketing and design teams. Um, and like I said, we really wanted to understand now that everyone has adjusted to working from home, you know, everyone has uh, as an expert at Zoom and um, all the other systems that you're using on a day to day basis. Um, what does it mean to actually be efficient um, in doing creative review and approval uh, when your entire creative team is working remotely? Um, and what we've seen is that not only have workloads increased, but there's a huge investment happening in new technologies as all processes go digital. So team chat, project management, task management, there's a lot of integration that needs to happen between those technologies to stay on top of tasks and projects. Um, so we really wanted to understand what does that actually look like on the ground and how, do, how can you set those up efficiently? So even in our own internal, um, internal proofing system, you know, we've seen that in 2020, 23% of our Zyflow clients, Zyflow proofing users uh, are using some form of integration automation. So they've connected online proofing um, their review tasks um, to other systems. Uh, they've really just used our Zybots to plug those systems together. So there's definitely an increased investment in getting all those systems to work together. Um, and in the last year, there was also a 50% increase in proofs and uh, assets that are connected to some sort of automated workflow. So um, there's really a clear delineation of um, creative teams using um, you know, clear stages and steps to facilitate review and approval. Um, so really interesting to understand, like I said, how creative teams are adjusting to this new reality. Um, and as part of our survey, we found that um, one of the major roadblocks is just investing in new staffing and resources. So, uh, you know, how do you hire someone remotely when you have an increased workload? Um, how do you make the case to invest in new technologies? How do you understand which integrations um, are most impactful for staying on top of um, creative workloads? So, uh, even though there's a huge increase uh, in in work, um, you know, over 50% of 
the creatives that we surveyed said that they don't yet have the right technology, people are resourcing in place to reach those strategic goals, which for a number of teens is simply just staying afloat uh, or as I said, adjusting to that volatility and um, in maintaining work, uh, work processes. So I started talking to a lot of our customers about um, what were your top work from home challenges when you had to either suddenly go remote or take everything um, fully remote if you were working from home previously or already had some sort of digital system in place. And, um, you know, most companies have adjusted to this at this point. We're, uh, you know, almost a year into um, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, which forced everyone to pretty much work from home. Um, and I know some teams have started coming back into the office, kind of depending on where you are and what your industry is. But I think creative teams have a unique challenge when going remote. And this is definitely backed up by um, some of the customer examples that I'll show uh, in a little bit. But Creative teams, you know, when you're working with a high volume of assets, these huge files um, and a number of different projects and across different asset types, um, marketing teams um, have to have their eye on very different um, concerns than uh, say a sales team or uh, other areas of the business. So um, one major challenge when going remote is just having the flexibility to digitally and securely add new collaborators to your project spaces. So uh, if you're proofing a website or if you're proofing um, an ad copy or you're working with some sort of legal documentation, you know, different folks will need to be involved in reviewing that. And you can't physically just go hand a version to someone at their desk. Um, really understanding how to replicate that in a secure and transparent way um, across all of your uh, processes and all of your technology systems uh, becomes a major concern. And and uh, any creative team will know there's just like a huge variety in the types of collaborators you have to work with depending on the project. Um, and so how do, you, yeah, how do you replicate that in a way that's efficient um, when you can't have in-person collaboration? Um, another major area is just being able to accurately facilitate color inversion comparison. So if you're a design team, you know, color accuracy is really important if you're used to working with uh, high volume, high quality printing uh, to do your review and approval and to compare versions. So um, when you're transitioning to remote, how, how do you ensure that um, the digital file that you're looking at is actually the same color quality uh, as the final asset and accurate uh, either against your brand guidelines or uh, different regulatory guidelines that you may need to be uh, considering when you're facilitating review. Um, and of course, maintaining transparent project archives is a huge challenge um, when you're going digital. Um, and it could be an area uh, of concern, it's hard to create transparency sometimes when there's emails going across uh, all these different departments. There are, um, you know, you have a Slack channel for one thing, perhaps you're creating um, tasks and attached management systems. So how do you take all of these digital communication channels um, and create really an audit trail of how a project is being um, created and accomplished, um, like I said, across departments, across working groups, when you're not physically in the office to see that work happening, or you can't easily just go collaborate or have an in-person meeting where um, those steps would be obvious. So creative teams, when you're working with just a huge volume of projects, you know, that having a project archive and just a project history um, in a digital format that's easy for teams to understand is just a huge area of concern. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, being able to absorb increases in project workload while maintaining or exceeding your output delivery timelines. Um, that's always a concern for creative teams that are sort of strapped for time and strapped for resources and dealing with last minute requests. But um, when you are uh, trying to maintain your output um, against a lot of uh, volatility, um, it becomes even more important to have a standardized process in place that can quickly move um, into a digital realm. So these are really four areas where we found in the last year that teams that needed to either very quickly rem uh, go to remote work or um, you know, transition fully into remote um, uh, slowly, uh, kind of the four focus areas. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how high performance teams have um, 
have addressed these concerns and uh, managed to create efficiency in spite of these uh, uh, areas of concern. So we did a lot of, uh, like I said, uh, interviews with our clients um, and uh, surveying um, creative leaders and wanted to understand, um, you know, it's not just enough to replicate um, your manual production process. Um, what does it really mean to create uh, a competitive advantage out of working entirely in a digital space um, uh, when there's a lot of, um, a lot of issues around sort of fidelity of files and uh, collaboration that needs to happen. So three areas that we found that high performance remote teams do really well is uh, first, they've moved totally away from email uh, for content sharing and markup. Um, and email is a huge headache for sort of everyone, even if you're in the office, but um, it again boils down to really building in areas of transparency in the process. So. Um, when you send off an email, if you send off an email with a file for review, um, it's hard to verify that someone has seen that email, opened the email, that they're actually working on the content. So teams that um, have really made a solid transition to um, efficient remote work have clear review schedules with, uh, that's connected to real-time feedback. Um, so everyone knows where everything is in the process. You're not kind of waiting on uh, an email to come back with feedback and then kind of comparing that against the file and uh, then communicating that, that feedback has been incorporated. Um, and another area of transparency is just really being able to add new collaborators into these non-email methods. So uh, this came up a lot is when, you know, Creative teams typically will already have some sort of efficient process, you know, for internal review. But how do you add someone from another department uh, into a project? How do you add a client into a project um, without uh, making them learn a whole new system? Everyone understands email, but um, how do you very quickly and securely um, add new collaborators into your process without um, without creating a lot of friction and obviously delays in the review process. Um, the second area that is of great importance when moving remotely is just integration between project management, task management, collaboration, proofing, all the, the different work systems that your team is probably already using um, to collaborate on a daily basis. So high performance uh, creative teams really are able to delineate where different types of work should occur in the process and how those systems will work together. So you're not replicating um, a conversation in Slack on a Google doc um, and everyone can know where to find information around uh, project files, the status of uh, creative work and um, understand how and where to collaborate um, both internally within your creative team and then as a wider organization. Um, and uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, just having a comprehensive project audit trail and archival is really important to be able to recall past project files and um, decisions or even in progress steps. So everyone knows um, what decisions occurred at which stage and being able to compare versions um, to create digital transparency for everyone. So again, if you can't walk a file over to someone or, or uh, turn around at your desk and uh, ask someone behind you a question about a certain project, be able to sort of codify those in-person interactions in a clear project progression is very important when um, creating efficiency with remote work. So these are sort of the areas, like I said, that we found that um, high performance teams are really focused on. Um, now that we've been a year into this, um, these are really the areas of concern that, um, that teams are, are working on and are of uh, primary importance when figuring out how do, I, how do we work more collaboratively um, when we can't be in person in, in for the foreseeable future. So I want to uh, give a couple of examples of um, some Zyflow users that have managed this transition, um, either because of the COVID-19 crisis or because they were already working in a digital space, and um, just give some examples of how they um, replicated their creative production processes. Um, 
and how they not only just replicated them, but created efficiencies um, across the team. And I think these examples just really, I think will resonate with a number of you on the line of having to quickly remove, uh, go to remote work and then probably slowly figuring out um, what works for your team um, over the last few months. So hopefully this will give some insight into um, how other teams uh, have tackled uh, this unique challenge and how they have set up their creative production processes across their systems systems and working groups. Um, so the first uh, example I want to highlight is Yellow Media, uh, which is uh, the largest print and digital marketing company in the Caribbean. Um, so they produce uh, uh, yellow page books, which uh, are huge, you know, huge proof, huge asset, as well as digital marketing, video creation, um, a lot of other print and digital uh, marketing assets. So um, this situation will be very familiar, I think, to a lot of you. Is when COVID nineteen began, their you know their headquarters in Jamaica shut down within a week. Uh, they have about 100 employees. They all had to move to a work from home setup, which they're still uh, largely using to this day. And uh, for Yellow Media, it was the busiest time of the year. That's when they're printing, um, updating uh, their yellow pages. Um, and the company's production team uh, had been using a manual print process. Um, so they would print out copies, you know, send it, uh, route it physically for review, um, had some digital component to it, but largely were relying on um, manual, you know, manual markups to uh, progress uh, versioning forward. Um, so they had to quickly figure out how do we do this in a digital way when we don't all have access to high quality printers and we can't uh, physically mail, um, mail these projects around, it would just take too long. Um, and as a result, having to figure this out at a time when um, many of these projects were either being pushed forward or pushed back based on their clients' needs, you know, their clients are, were also responding to the pandemic. Uh, so all these project timelines were becoming very condensed. So they needed a way to, um, to be able to absorb that workload and do it digitally very quickly. So what they did is they, they implemented, uh, they started looking for a digital solution. Uh, they implemented uh, online proofing um, specifically for their production proofing. So as I said previously, the design team would just print out um, these uh, large copies of yellow pages and other assets, uh, which was just a huge volume of, of kind of physical printing time and costs. Um, now what they do is their graphic artists will create and upload the artwork um, directly to Zyflow, uh, which is then routed to their quality assurance and sales team for real-time review and commenting. Um, so that in-person collaboration has just really been replaced by um, online proofing and uh, commenting on the file specifically. Uh, you can see in this screenshot um, how the version comparison um, really helps with uh, reducing manual errors and just having accuracy in the design. Um, and uh, one of the benefits of this is that their paginators, their designers, they don't have to wait several days again for their quality team to send emails back or have feedback on physical, physical copies. So a really solid just example of how um, the pandemic really um, not only forced this company to go remotely, but gave them an opportunity to do something that they had wanted to do for a while. So uh, although they had to very quickly update their production process, it was something that they had looked at doing for a while and was an easy justification to um, their management team. So the results that they've seen just from moving into a remote production process is, you know, they've cut out about three fourths of their printing costs. So the cost of using online proofing was again, about a quarter of what they were uh, spending on, on printing for their production processes. Um, their graphics team has cut out uh, three steps in its production review process. So they're just able to get through things much more quickly. Um, for their largest projects, which I said are these large yellow pages, um, quality checks. So uh, the, it, the collaboration between their design team and quality team um, used to take about three weeks for their largest project, um, their largest book. And now it's taking about 1.5 weeks. So they're getting through these uh, quality checks much faster. Um, and as a result, uh, in their busiest time of the year, uh, they are able now to uh, send about three books to print instead of one in the same time frame. Um, so uh, they did a, uh, I talked with Cheryl, their um, 
their operations and graphics manager. And you know, she really said it gave them the opportunity to move remotely, but really created all of these uh, competitive advantages for them in terms of how they're able to turn projects around the clients faster. Um, and when they get into this crunch timeline where they have to turn around a lot of yellow pages quickly, um, they're able to do it without sort of additional stress and confusion, uh, which is just flow through the standard process. Um, and they did a survey recently uh, around um, asking their employees, you know, would you like to come back to the office, you know, just gauging um, how people were responding to remote work and 80% of the of the employees said that they were happier with this, uh, with this remote production process. So um, really made a lot of uh, gains um, by having to respond to this pandemic. Um, so I, again, I think this is a, a situation that a lot of different um, creative teams were in and um, a great example of how to adjust sort of on the fly and um, create a lot of uh, advantages out of that. Um, the next example that I wanted to show was a creative team that um, had already been using a really great mix of digital systems and online proofing as well um, and how that allowed them to just quickly pivot um, to a work from home scenario. Um, and I think that this is, this was something that a lot of teams had to figure out is, okay, we have, you know, we have our daily work systems in place, but is it going to be enough for 100% remote collaboration? You know, what adjustments do we need to make um, to what we've already been doing to optimize um, our uh, remote work. So prime education um, is in the medical education space. So they do medical research uh, and uh, education to healthcare providers, patients, physicians. And um, they're in a space that is has been drastically impacted by COVID. They're doing a ton of research around you know, infectious diseases and then need to create a ton of assets around um, that research. So their uh, scientific designers specialize in different diseases, uh, different areas of the medical field, and they produce you know, everything from long form report, reports and surveys to then um, transforming that information to website assets, social media graphics. So it's a huge volume of work that's created out of uh, this medical research. Um, and uh, like I said, their team had already been using online proofing and um, task management as well as JIRA. Um, so when they had to shut their Fort Lauderdale headquarters and move to remote work, um, it wasn't just their creative, their design team that was able to just quickly replicate and continue doing what they were doing. You know, They were able to take that entire collaboration sphere with their product team, their editorial team, and their scientific affairs team and just transition like I said, that entire universe into um, a work from home scenario. So the way that they are managing it, um, like I said, hasn't changed much, um, but I wanted to show uh, how their remote setup um, operates. So, uh, you know, they have these large proofs that uh, uh, will be created for clients or internally that can require a ton of revision, again, with multiple departments um, and, you can see some examples of uh, how those different um, those different research spaces are, are transformed into different assets there on the side. Um, and these assets are huge, you know, they're too big to be emailed, which is part of the reason that Prime, um, you know, has this digital collaboration uh, infrastructure in place is uh, you can't email uh, large artwork um, and uh, really facilitate that review through email. So um, what happens is they have um, an internal task management system where their um, SOPs originate. That um, kicks off a process in JIRA, which uh, manages all the tasks and initializes um, the artwork creation by the creative team. So they sort of manage their task management separately from online proofing and uh, really use online proofing as a way to um, review, track the actual review and approval of artwork as it's created. So new concepts are uploaded to Zyflow and then they use staged workflows to route um, route that artwork to the different departments. So as I said, that is scientific fairs, editing, um, 
in their line of work, you know, checking for medical accuracy um, is extremely important. So there's a lot of oversight that goes into um, ensuring that medical illustrations are anatomically correct and that um, any research data is formatted properly um, uh, across all the assets. So that's a huge area of review and they need to ensure, you know, that uh, that review is um, progressing in an efficient way. Um, so interestingly enough, they use they um, use Slack for all of their sort of collaboration and creative discussion and commenting. So um, instead of managing all of that in Zyflow around the file, they really use um, Slack as their um, collaboration space. And then that's tied back into the um, approval tracking in Zyflow. Um, so I think a, this is a great example of a company that um, has really figured out how to use these different systems um, in a very clear way across a number of collaborators. Um, so really, really a transparent, uh, high volume um, collaboration infrastructure. And uh, like I said, I think will be uh, useful to uh, any teams that have been using some of these systems, but want to understand how to best delineate the work between um, the number of any number of marketing systems that you could potentially be using uh, at your company. Um, so again, the advantages that they saw, um, even though they'd already been using the system is that they completely eliminated email feedback. Um, even when moving remotely, they were able to you know, add in um, collaborators into this digital review uh, system they already had in place. Um, they have 100% digital history of real-time changes. Um, and an interesting thing that they use Zyflow for is they use it, um, this history of review and approvals as sort of a post-mortem of the entire project. So um, when they are sending something off for review, um, being able to track, again, who opened the file, when they approved it, how long it took them to send feedback, um, you know, when design changes were implemented. Um, it's a really good analysis of um, where there might be bottlenecks in the process. So that digital transparency is sort of that next level that we see of remote work is not just having the controls in place to be able to collaborate efficiency, but then the oversight into, um, into that collaboration, what, uh, what, what's working, what's not working. So having that, uh, that analysis is really, like I said, the sort of next step of how creative teams are um, optimizing their remote work. And then again, with sort of version comparison and markups, um, designers can just indicate and ensure when scientific scientific affairs have just started the process of reviewing uh, chart data, anatomical data, um, everything that really needs to be completely accurate when you're putting out medical research. So really, really interesting use case. And I think a really good takeaway for teams that, um, like I said, want to optimize how you can make all of your different technology systems work together. Uh, and then the final example that I want to show is uh, BPG International, which is a consumer goods company um, that creates fragrances. So I uh, think air freshening products um, that are sort of sold internationally through um, different retail channels. Um, and they had a similar situation in that they're doing a lot of high volume product and packaging design, um, uh, but they were routing all that artwork physically in their office. So like so many teams, they were forced to go to re go remote um, and they had to ask themselves, how do we mimic this physical artwork routing um, in a high volume way? How do we take that digital without sacrificing the accuracy that we are able to ensure when we do physical printouts? So for product packaging design, um, some of the things that were important were obviously color accuracy, uh, as well as making sure that regulatory copy and panel size on these different packages uh, were meeting regulatory standards. So having measurement tools that um, allow not just the design team, but um, the regulatory team to uh, put those checks and balances in place against all of the assets. So uh, again, when you're moving from high quality printing into a digital system, that's a really giant area of concern is how do we maintain this accuracy that we already know how to do in a physical way uh, when we're moving to a digital solution. Um, so the way that they address that is, you know, they do about 10 to 15 groupings of product packaging per month. So you can see an example there of um, 
some of the air freshening products that they produce. So just different variations um, of those products, uh, which you know includes a lot of combined PDFs. So they have to do you know cross checking against a ton of varieties of packaging design. Um, so how they facilitate this now instead of using a physical printing process is the design team will send proofs to marketing, product development, um, regulatory teams for real-time commenting and review. Um, with these review for workflows, anybody on those teams can add sort of uh, sorry, not anyone on the teams, but their design team can sort of add and remove reviewers as necessary, just really depending on the product type, the project, who needs to um, do uh, design and regulatory review. And um, what really helped them move into a digital format was using, um, Zyvil has a measurement tool uh, that you can verify product text and panel size. So not only are they able to use use a markup tool that is accurate um, and can ensure that the actual file, what they, what a reviewer is seeing on the file is, is actually in compliance, um, but they can input comments around any disclosure, disclaimers or industry requirements directly on the artwork, um, which again would happen in, in a physical way, but the designers no longer have to you know, track that down or collate that all together. It's all in one space. Um, and the design team can, is, aware that that regulatory review has started. Um, and I think that goes back to this idea of transparency uh, of not necessarily pushing the timeline forward for regulatory review, but understanding that that review has started and someone is working with the file um, or this series of files that um, need to all be reviewed across the same standards and just having a, a marker and indication that that review has started, which is, obviously very hard to do when you're working off email. So again, a good example of how a team had to just really quickly take a complex project, uh, complex process, turn it digital um, and maintain um, accuracy and compliance in the process. Um, so again, I think I just covered this, but their advantage is really just having regulatory approval access. Um, they know that that review is underway. Um, having real-time commenting on real-time versions. So instead of physically routing copies, you know, all collaborators can look at new artwork in the click of a button. They don't have to print out a new version or email a new version. Um, you can do uh, just a comparison and the comments are there sort of in a clean format, um, which is really important. Again, when you're reviewing a number of versions of varieties of, of an asset and just having real-time project status. So. These were things that BPG was already doing really well, uh, but being able to sort of solidify their digital um, production process across all of their teams um, was really important for that project visibility. Um, and one, uh, one piece of advice that their design director had was, you know, being able to use a web-based tool, whether it's for proofing or task management or any step of the production and collaboration process is really important because you have, uh, you know, compatibility and software versions that you don't have to worry about. Um, and the security is on the, you know, the vendor side. Um, and any of those concerns that you can kind of take off of your plate when you're moving to remote digital systems is really important. You know, you want to you want to be able to focus on is the work getting done in a timely manner, not how do I add someone to the system? How do I, you know, is it secure? Um, do I have to continually have everyone update their software versions to be able to just get work done? Um, so another great example, as I said, of moving from a physical um, production process into a really well-oiled, um, really well-oiled digital uh, digital setup. Um, so those are, like I said, just. I think three really high quality examples from um, on the ground creatives that have had to make this transition. And hopefully that um, gave you some insight into how to set up um, some of your systems or optimize what you're already doing and just some insight into how someone else has managed this transition. I know it's all hard. Everyone's working in their silos from their home offices and, and managing their workload um, against a number of different things and trying to stay sane in the process. So um, it can be done and we're seeing so many um, creative teams making these 
huge improvements and just having great advantages from um, implementing digital systems. So um, part of that, like I said, is having really tight integrations between your uh, different uh, work systems. And I'm gonna turn it over to Will, who's gonna demonstrate how to use um, online proofing with some of the existing systems that you may be leaning on every day and just how to get more out of those systems and ensure that, like I said, you're not replicating tasks or documents between and it's not a free for all in these different siloed systems. Um, so uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Will if he's on the line. Perfect, so Katie, if you stop your share, I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thanks everyone for attending the webinar today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple of the different integrations that um, Zyphlo, can, Zyphlo has built that can really help you with your remote working experience. I think one of the things that Katie said that really kind of hit the nail on the head is that these are things that you're doing well or you have been doing well already, but with the transition from in-office environment to a work-from-home environment or or a collaborative kind of disjointed environment, there's a, there's a few things that you just have to adapt the processes that you go. So we want to highlight a few integrations today, um, Microsoft Teams, Jira, and Monday as a project management tool. Zyphal has a number of different integrations with a number of different tools, but really want to highlight three different tools today to talk about some of the benefits of specific integrations. Before I dive into each individual integration, let's just take a step back and talk about how the integrations work within Zyphlo itself. All of this is powered within the Connect area of Zyphlo. The most important thing about that is Connect essentially allows you to choose which event starts your integration. This becomes really flexible in determining what information you want sent from Zyphlo to another system. Traditionally, most of these integrations are going to be kicked off when a new proof or version is made, but you'll have the ability to control whether these integrations get triggered by decisions, comments, comments being resolved, or comments being labeled. As we talk about the specific integrations, I'll give different examples of how these can be used in different ways to really help streamline and organize that process. The first integration that I want to highlight today is actually our integration with Microsoft Teams. One of the things that I've heard from a lot of our customers, especially with the transition in 2020 from an in-office environment to a work from, uh, uh, work from home environment or a remote working environment, is really the number of emails has increased exponentially. There were a lot of emails when everyone was in the office already, but now that everyone is working remotely, the number of emails has drastically increased and staying on top of your emails becomes really difficult. One of the things that our integration with communication tools like Teams or Monday, or sorry, Teams or Slack allows you to do is you can keep all that information consolidated inside your communication tool. So this is where people are already talking to each other and it doesn't get buried in your inbox with the dozens of other emails that you may be getting throughout the day. What um, what the Teams integration allows you to do is you can push updates from Zyflow directly into specific channels within Teams or Slack. These channels can be as granular as you need to. We've seen organizations build channels just to store all their Zyflow updates. We've seen um, organizations or clients build channels for specific clients or projects. You can choose which channels, which proofs send information to. And now rather than balancing all this through email notifications, these alerts, these notifications are going directly to the communication tool. As you can see here, I have a couple of updates from yesterday. I saw a new proof was created. I saw a couple of comments were being made. I saw a decision was being submitted. And what this integration allows me to do is rather than logging in and checking inside Zyflow, rather than relying on my inbox, I can see all of this in real time as actions occur directly in my communication tool. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So I'm going to very simply create a brand new proof or brand new version of existing proof within Zyflow. 
just taking any random asset here. And let's go ahead and hit create. My experience within Xiflow is going to be exactly the same. Within Xiflow, I don't need to do anything special. I'm simply uploading a proof as I always did. I can apply a workflow. I can add reviewers to it. So I can actually add in all of this information uh, within Xiflow, just like I always do, how I normally work within the process. But what's going to happen in the background is in real time, these notifications, these updates are going to be pushed to the specific channel within Teams. So if I go back to Teams, I can see a new message has come in, letting everyone know that version two of this proof has been uploaded and they can access the proof directly from Teams. It's just another communication source, but it's where people are already working. So now they don't need to you don't need to make sure they're checking their inbox. You don't need to worry about getting lost in an email. It's going directly to the tool that they're communicating in today. As I mentioned earlier, within the flow itself, you can choose which events trigger these notifications. So within Teams, I just created a new version, but I can also have it push things such as my comments and my decisions. Very quickly, let's go ahead and see that in action. So here, as I jot down my comments, as I render my decisions, all this is going to be pushed to Teams in real time. Again, your experience in Xiflow never changes. You're going to review your asset as you always have. You're going to submit your decision as you always have. But what you'll have the ability to do is um, what the system will, auto what the integration will automatically do in the background is that it's going to go ahead and send these updates in real time to the specific channels that you're defining within the integration. Depending on the action that occurs, you're going to notice there's a couple of differences in the messages that are being sent. In this case, with the new proof notification, it's allowing me to open proof. In the comment notification, I can jump directly to the comment. In the decision notification, if enabled, I can actually download the file directly from Xiflow as well. So each notification gets unique to the action that's occurring within Xiflow. So you'll be able to actually interact with these notifications and messages in Teams slightly differently depending on the event that's happening within Xiflow. And it, it doesn't need to be all or nothing. We've seen clients, we've seen clients simply set up the proof notification. So within the channel, within Teams, they're notified when new proofs are being sent to review. We've seen clients set it up so only decision notifications are being sent to Teams as well. The flexibility of the integration really allows you to pick and choose what the most meaningful notifications that should be sent to your communication tool um, tool should be. And that could be things like comments, decisions, new proofs or versions, but it's really finding the most relevant information and notifications and making sure that those are being sent to the proper places so they don't get buried in someone's inbox, especially with the um, exponential growth of emails that may be received. The next integration that I want to highlight is really our JIRA integration. If, if, um, if People have attended this one previously. You may remember that Mike and I, myself, we presented uh, we presented uh, a webinar a few months ago about um, agile marketing and how to use tools for agile marketing and what agile marketing looks like. One of the most important parts of agile marketing is simply grooming your tickets, making sure that tickets are being created at the right time and making sure that tickets have all the right information. Traditionally, grooming tickets usually happens on a meeting. Everyone gets in the same room, you throw the ticket up there and you talk about the ticket, you make any adjustments to the ticket. Now with the transition to remote working, grooming tickets has become a lot more difficult, especially for agile marketing teams. What the Xiflow integration allows you to do is you can streamline your ticket creation within a tool like Jira and have Xiflow automatically create the ticket based off of information that occurs or events that happen within Xiflow. So these same events can trigger ticket creation. Most typically, we're going to see ticket creation trigger on decisions being made or comments being labeled, which is what I'm going to demonstrate today. 
So in this case, let's take a look at a different asset that um, that you may be you may be applying your agile marketing principles on. So let's go ahead and take a look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at a website that we're currently redesigning. This is a live website that's being reviewed through Zyflow. Um, one of the unique aspects of Zyflow is you'll be able to review and approve your live content. So for this website, I can navigate it. Any elements that such as hovers, drop downs, pages, all that exists within my live website review. I can also control the resolution type. So if I wanna see what this website looks like, on an iPhone, or if I want to see what this website would look like on an iPad, I can review that directly within Zyflow itself without needing to transition to a different device. And as I navigate through it, I can make my markup and annotations directly on this during my website review. In this case, I added a comment earlier um, that H1 isn't inheriting the style element, so we should check the CSS and make sure that it's working for the iOS mobile responsive view. Now, traditionally, what would happen is you want to go and you want to create this ticket in JIRA so that the development team or the QA team can go ahead and action these changes for you. Within Zyflow, what we've done with this integration is we've tied this to the development label. As people are adding comments, as I apply a specific label, in my example, development, this can automatically, uh, sorry, I'm hiding all my labels here, um, as I've applied this label, this can go and automatically create the ticket in JIRA and send all the inf relevant information from my comment directly to JIRA. Now I no longer have to copy and paste. I no longer have to groom that ticket. All the information from the comment itself is going to be pushed directly to JIRA. And I'll be able to see, as I refresh my board, I can see that this ticket gets created in real time with the relevant links that are necessary. So I can view the proof, I can view the comment, and I can see the comment information here. Absolutely, you're still going to want to adjust and edit and update your ticket as necessary, but this really eliminates that communication step between getting information from the asset review itself into your ticketing system that you may be using for traditional development, techno, uh, web development, or agile marketing as well. So now this information is being pushed directly from Zyflow to your ticketing tool with the helpful links, and you can modify these as needed. So really simplifying the process. If the ticket's ready, you can, you can navigate and move it directly like you would any other ticket within JIRA. So really streamlining that ticket creation process. And finally, I wanna go ahead and show our Monday integration. Now, one of the things that we've heard and one of the most popular increases that we've seen integration wise is really with project management tool integrations within Zyflow. Um, as teams have become more remote, visibility into the project becomes more and more critical. So the project management integration allows you to very quickly see what may be happening within proofs within Zyflow directly from one centralized view. We support a number of different PM tools such as Asana, Trello, Monday, but here I just want to very quickly highlight the Monday integration. With the Monday integration, we can very quickly update tasks or um, update specific tasks or items within your Monday board as changes are occurring within Zyflow. For example, let's go ahead and take a look at a proof that's already going through review. So let's go ahead and take a look at this proof that I'm currently reviewing. Oh, sorry, that is not the right one. This proof that I'm currently reviewing here. So um, all I have to do, again, I can interact with this proof as I know, always have within Zyflow. I'll be able to upload new versions, attach reviewers, apply decisions, but this this specific proof is tied to this item within Monday. 
So it's just selection to make it obvious. We're currently on B2, it's in progress. And as I perform specific actions on this proof, for example, if I was to change the decision to change as required, these updates are going to be updated directly in Monday in real time. So I can actually see in my Monday board that this proof is going to go from in progress to changes required. So here, automatically as decisions are being rendered within Xiflow, these changes are being pushed to my project management tool to create that visibility. As additional updates are occurring, it's going to continue to update that task or that item. So as I upload a brand new version, as I make any changes that are necessary, all this information is going to be pushed through. So while this proof is processing, let's very quickly look at this. Uh, at this task, the status is currently changes required on B2, and here's the proof link to B2. But as I create a new version, all this information is going to be pulled directly to Xiflow and update directly on Monday itself. Now I'm not going to need to manage two platforms to keep information updated. You don't need to manually translate that information or bring that information over to to your PM tool like Monday. So here, as I created that new version, you can see the version number updated to B3, went from changes required back to in progress, and the proof link automatically gets updated as well. Hey, Katie, I'm going to hand it back to you. Um, I, um, those were the different integrations that I wanted to highlight today. So I want to show everyone the Xiflow and Microsoft Teams integration, the Xiflow and Jira integration, and the Xiflow and Monday integration. So I know there were a couple of things that you want to still cover off on, Katie. So I'm going to stop my screen share and pass it back to you. Okay, great. So I just wanted to kind of quickly wrap up what we've covered uh, as we move forward into 2021 and creative teams. Uh, think about how can you really get more out of how your team is working remotely. Um, all of you on the line, I'm sure, have uh, ways that you've implemented uh, digital production that works for you. But hopefully this webinar gave you some new, uh, new processes that you can implement, new integrations. Um, uh, so thank you all for demonstrating kind of how the nitty gritty of that can work for creative workers. Um, but I think the main takeaways uh, that we've found as we've talked with creative teams that have weathered this transition is that remote working, it really didn't reduce workloads or delivery expectations. If anything, they're higher uh, now that um, everyone is still adjusting to changes in their market um, and um, is uh, working in a digital space. Uh, Things that would typically happen in kind of casual office conversations or in-person meetings um, and check-ins uh, have now been replaced with these high-frequency integrations that Will just showed, um, you know, between different applications in order to keep everyone on the same page. It's really not a matter of uh, if they happen, but they they need to be to create that transparency um, across projects. Um, and automation is playing a huge role in the coordination of multi-team projects. So ensuring that five files and chats and um, decisions are all transparent across the different systems that you're working in. And it's just important for everything to be real time um, when you don't have that in-person interaction. Um, real time uh, needs to be visible to everyone in the different spaces they're working in. So um, definitely so much, you know, so much room for uh, kind of continued improvement in remote work and um, really a lot of efficiency gains that can be made um, even if you're still, uh, like I said, using Zoom or Slack or uh, systems that you're used to, there's, um, optimizations that still can be made in 2021 to uh, not just maintain workload, but really take on new projects and achieve uh, those strategic goals um, as we roll into the new year. So just wanna thank everyone again for joining us today. Um, and we're gonna move into some q and I think there were a couple uh, questions in the chat. So uh, Mike, I'm gonna turn it over to you if you uh, wanna go through some of the, uh, the questions from our uh, attendees. Great, thanks. Uh, great job, Katie and Will. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation today. Uh, we do have a handful of questions. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, so let's see if we can get through a few of these. Um, and then uh, for those of you that uh, put in your name um, and ask questions that we didn't get to, we will answer those uh, personally after this webinar. 
Uh, the first question, uh, a great question. I think one that we run into quite a bit. Um, how would you suggest incorporating external partners like clients uh, when moving production processes in a remote into a remote um, setting? Uh, this is one I know that we get quite a bit. Um, uh, so, you know, Will, I'm actually going to throw this one over to you. Uh, I know that you have a lot of experience with regards to the internal external client review process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how to incorporate clients in, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but I would really recommend using the automated workflow for that. So one of the key aspects is making sure that you're staging your review correctly and making sure that clients are get, aren't getting in there too soon. Um, what we've seen, what we've seen from a lot of clients is there's resistance to actually bringing their clients into the review process simply because they're concerned that the clients may see something that they aren't supposed to see. And with a properly set up workflow, that really shouldn't be a risk at all. Within the workflows, you can def you can define the trigger, um, you can define the trigger criteria that moves it from stage to stage. So the client should never be able to access the proof before you're ready for them to access. And more importantly, you'll also be able to control whether comments in previous stages are public or private. So um, you can create private comments during your internal review process. And once you're ready, you can invite in the clients and have the system automatically do that through the automated workflow and have them only see and communicate with you through those public comments. The real core benefit for that is you're not disconnecting your communication. You're not doing your internal reviews through Zyflow and then doing an offline review with your clients. You're really streamlining that whole process by keeping it in the same place. But I highly recommend using the automated workflow for that because it gives you the controls and that peace of mind to know that your clients are only going to be brought in when you're absolutely ready for them. Great, thank you, Will. Um, do you have any, um, Will, I'll, I'll stay with this. Um, I'll stay with you on this next question. Do you have any recommendations on how to writing tasks or communication between different digital systems like, like online proofing like Zyflow and Slack? Sorry, you broke up for a second there, Mike. Can you repeat that one? Yeah, sure. Any uh, best practices or recommendations about um, not replicating uh, communication streams across these um, uh, different channels like online proofing or Slack? Yeah, absolutely. As I, as I mentioned during the demonstration, one of the unique aspects with the Zyflow integrations is you can really control which event um, which is which activity kicks off that integration. So um, one of the things that I mentioned during the demonstration is you may not want to send everything. You probably shouldn't send everything between from Zyflow to your communication tool like Teams and Slack. You probably want to only send what's relevant for that specific channel or that specific team. So in that scenario, you may only want to choose to send decisions. You may only want to send new proof notifications. You may only want to send comments or resolved comments, whatever it may be. But the, my recommendation really is to, to think about what should be communicated via email in the Zyflow email notifications and what communications may my, uh, what communications may need more real-time notifications. And those are the ones that you want to push to the, to the communication tool like Teams or Slack. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, and I think we'll actually, maybe this question was asked right before we'll cover it, but uh, we'll did point that out. And I think it's something that we should amplify is that it's not an all or nothing um, situation with regards to sending events and triggers um, through the different communication streams. That's a very good point to make. Um, here's an interesting question, Will. This is more along the, uh, and I know you love technical questions. Uh, if we have a tool that does not directly integrate with Zyflow, could we daisy chain, so to speak, with a common tool each does integrate with? Yeah, absolutely. You can actually. Um, one of the one of the unique aspects, and this is going to get a little technical here. One of the unique aspects is Zyflow can receive information from other tools as well. Um, one of the more uh, one of the more customized ways that I've seen a Jira integration, for example, is that Zyflow will create a ticket in Jira, and then Jira will send information about that ticket back to Zyflow, which Zyflow will store along that proof. 
as activities happen in JIRA. Zyflow can check to see what's going on within JIRA and then make different changes on the ticket itself based off of current statuses. So you can absolutely daisy chain it. Uh, we call them flows. So you can daisy chain your flow where Zyflow is sending information to this different tool. That tool may send information back to a different tool um, that tool sends information back to the tools iFlow integrates with, which can send information back to Zyflow. So absolutely that is going to be possible. It, it's always a little bit devil's is in the details though. So it depends on the tools and what information that you're trying to send, but we've absolutely seen, uh, we've seen kind of a daisy trained integration where multiple tools are talking to each other and ultimately pushing information from Zyflow to those tools or from those tools back into Zyflow. Great, thanks, Will. I know you love those technical questions. Um, well, we are at the top of the hour, so I want to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and call this a uh, completed webinar at this point. Uh, there are a few questions that were left over um, that I actually think require a little bit more technical um, response. So we are going to reach out to you personally with uh, our answers. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for taking the time to put in your questions and thank everyone. We really appreciate your attendance today. Um, be on the lookout from an email from us with today's recording, as well as um, our next webinar coming up next month. Uh, we'll be uh, reaching out to you soon about the date and time and subject about that as well. Uh, with that, I just want to say thank you to everybody and have a great rest of your day.